we're now going to be looking at matching problems and we're going to be using bipartite graphs. So here is a bipartite graph. It's a bipartite graph because you have two distinct set of vertices and the vertices within one of those sets, none of them connect with another directly. So A is not connected to B, B cart is not connected to D directly. Okay. You can find a path to them, of course, using the other vertices, but they are not directly connected. So I can't have a line there, for example. So that's, that's what we mean by a bipartite graph. And essentially what this is, is it could represent four people, A, B, C and D, with four jobs. One, two, three, and four. And the arrows, well, so the, ar the arcs or the edges represent um, that worker A can do job one or job three. B can do job one or job two. C can do job two, three, and four. And D can do job two and job four. And what we're looking for is a maximal matching uh, or potentially a complete matching if it's available. Okay, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, I, hopefully, there is a way of matching each worker to a job. Uh, in some cases, that's not always possible. So you're trying to find the best possible outcome, and that would be a maximal matching. So how can we write that as a linear programming problem? Well, we're going to return to indicator variables. So what we used in the first, um, first few well, the first uh, couple, rather, the shortest path and longest path uh, LP solvers that we looked at in this section, um, where that means that A1 can either take on the value 1 or 0. 1 if it's being picked, 0 if it's not. OK, so essentially what I want to do is my objective function is to maximise the sum of all of the edges. So A1 plus A3 plus B1 plus B2 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4 plus D2 plus D4. So this is the sum of all of the edges okay, um, that I can pick. Now some of these will be ones, some of these will be zeros. So essentially, and hopefully, I can find uh, this being equal to 4, okay? Because I want each worker to be uh, mapped to just one uh, of the jobs. So I need the constraints that will allow that to happen. So subject 2. Now worker A can only do two jobs, uh, so one or three, okay? But I only want them to do one of them. So I want worker A to either do one or three, okay? But they can't do both, and I don't want neither, potentially, okay? I don't want neither, but it might happen. So I've got to uh, take account of that, because if I said that was equal to one, then that would mean one of those would have to be one and the other would have to be zero. Okay, and that forces A has to do one of those two jobs. But because we're looking at a maximal matching as well, we want to make sure that um, the way that we write this down uh, attributes to that and uh, the way we work it down, we write it down, works for all scenarios. Um, we can't guarantee that A will be picked. So we're going to have to have that as less than or equal to 1. It can't be anything greater than 1, so it can't be 2, otherwise worker A can do both of them, Okay, which we don't want to have. So that means that we're either going to have 0 plus 0, 1 plus 0, or 0 plus 1. Okay, so the same problem goes with B. Uh, we're going to need worker B can either do B1 or B2, and that's got to be less than or equal to 1. Uh, for worker C, C2 plus C3 plus C4 has got to be less than or equal to 1. Um, so we're either going to have 0, 0, 0, or 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, or 0, 0, 1, depending on which of the jobs he gets picked to do. 
Then for worker D, uh, we've got D2 plus D4. That's going to be less than or equal to 1. Okay? Right. Now, what that does is it stops a worker um, from being allocated to more than one job. That's what those constraints do. However, there is a problem. We can't just stop there because there is no problem now with worker B, because that, that could be 0 and 1, so B2 could be 1, and C2 could be 1. But I don't want two workers doing the same job. So I must have a constraint on each of the jobs as well. So I need A1 plus B1, so the two workers who can do job one, I only want one of them to be picked, so at most. So that's got to be less than or equal to one. And for job two, we've got B2 plus C2 plus D2. Three people who can do it, but I only want one of them at the most. Then for job three, we've got A3 plus C3, and that's got to be less than or equal to 1. And then for job 4, C4 plus D4 has got to be less than or equal to 1. And so these are the constraints required uh, in order to have this as a linear programming problem that will solve it.